I'm muted. Okay, I'm muted. I'm back. I'm back. Let me know if I'm coming in okay now. Let me know if I'm, I'm coming in. Okay, I'm muted. <laughs> uh, I was saying I had some technical difficulties with Streamlabs today. I went live around uh, 12. <laughs> and, uh, and as soon as I went live, it was like, oh, error, streaming issue. And I was like, what? I've never seen this before. So, okay. Thanks, guys. Audio clear now. Appreciate it. Okay, awesome. Welcome, everyone. Alex, uh, Joe, Chris, Sanju, Johnny. Welcome. DJ, E. Gadge says, hold the line. Yeah, it's an interesting day, to say the least, on Tesla today. Um, we're sitting at eight, uh, eight, 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 586 at the moment on Tesla. Quite the interesting day. I mean, today, we this morning, we had... Um, we started at the highs, pretty much, right? $596. Thought it was going to be a gap and go kind of day. Uh, ended up not really being like that, um, or at least it isn't right now. Uh, yes, you're asking. I, I I got the juju power. Welcome, Tyler. I got the juju power here sitting here with me. Um, so get your oranges. Get your good power going. Johnny says big 700 strike call for for June 18th. Okay, we'll take a look right here. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're up. We were up uh, three percent on 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 pre markets as Raptor. Absolutely. Um, Jan says crypto's killing. Yeah, I feel that. Um, so let's talk. So let's talk. So the volume weighted average price for today is sitting at 588. That continually has become a, a support, a, a resistance point for the stock today. The volume, uh, last time I checked, we're sitting at 22-ish million shares traded on Tesla. Uh, again, this is power hour, so potentially we see more shares traded now um, than, than the rest of the day. So let's take a look. I mean, at the end of the day, what we have to realize is Friday is OPEX. Today is OPEX. It is the third Friday in the month of May, um, which means, you know, there's probably going to be a little bit of higher volume, a little bit more volatility. Um, so a rally into close is not out of the question today. Uh, simultaneously saying a sell off into close is not out of the question today. Today is going to be interesting to see what happens uh, because it is OPEX right it is opex and yes we're going to look at flows in a second here if i can eat my orange in the money how's it going this seems like a normal friday yeah so far it is so far it is um what we want to see here is really us break over 588 and hold if we can break over 588 there's a good chance that we go for high a day there's a good chance we got some juju power going so let's take a look um, in terms of flows, let's take a look at that now. Let's see what the market's price or what big money is able to do today. Uh, let me put my flows. So flows is very quiet uh, at the moment. We have dark pool prints, which makes sense for options expiration day. And we're going to go through dark pools in a second here. But let's go through flows, okay? We had a we had a split uh, options order sweep, a single exchange sweep, uh, sweep, which is not as strong. Uh, of 950 calls for next March. So these are leaps. Uh, we saw one small call sweep for 150K at 625 strike calls for uh, next next Friday and one small sweep for 200K um, for 520 calls for June. So really quiet on that end. In dark pool prints, uh, we have seen, what is it, over a million dollars at this point. Uh, just about a million or a million shares worth of dark pool prints for Tesla, with the most recent one being at 585. So 585. 585 means at the moment if we're sitting at let me up the graph at the moment if we're sitting at 586.59, if as long as we can close above this, and especially above that first dark pool print of five, I think it's 589. Not 585. There was one, yeah, 300 lot, 300,000 uh, lot order of 589s. If we can finish above 590 today, that would be that'd be quite bullish for us moving into next week. Um, so let's see here. <laughs> this is awesome. Everyone in Discord's posting what they're drinking for uh, for Power Hour live stream. Marco's got the got the Lefe blonde beer. I like it. Very nice. By the way, join us on our Discord chat if you'd like. Um, let me show you what that looks like, actually, if I can. Uh, come join us on Discord. It's where we talk uh, crypto, Tesla, other stocks, 24-7, how we can potentially trade, uh, get we bounce ideas off of each other. Marco looks like he's drinking uh, this lager here. Like it. I like it. Uh, so join us in here. 
Well, have a good time. Uh, Patreon link is actually in the pinned comment. The best five bucks or whatever plan you want to go on that you'll that you'll probably spend. Okay, good group of people in there, and a lot of you guys watching. Um, so you can't believe Ford is up seven percent. Yeah, the market is not rational, right? I think we've covered that much. Um, the good news on the day is we're not that far away from being green. If we can, and let's go, let's go to the daily graph. Let's take a look. You guys tell me what you guys think about this daily graph. Okay. I'm going to step back for a second. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Cause I have my opinion on this graph. You might have your opinion on this graph, but what does this kind of say? And this is the 200 day moving average, uh, or the simple moving average, this bottom blue line right here. What do you guys think? What do you guys think this signals to you? right diet coke and ice nice steve like it uh yeah here i can explain uh dark pole prints in a sec t mac welcome haul on my diet coke beeps i like it just had a coke zero for the first time in like two years the other week and i i want more um squawk scare jim says squawk scare says look at the call options above 700 level of the week of june 18th expiration some big bets that tesla is going much higher could be. I mean, looking at option open interest is kind of a gong show. Chris says that looks like a bull pattern. Supa says that looks like a, uh, that signals rocket. Philip says this is a buy the dip for sure. Chris says we're coming back into the wedge. Okay. Buying opportunity. Costa says stock market crash coming. Possible. Okay. Addicted to Diet Coke. Okay. This is what it looks like to me. Okay. So I'm, I'm, there's good news and bad news. The good news is really like how much more and that's a, this is going to be a rhetorical question how much more can we dip past the 200 day moving average you could argue there is support at the lows of march at 540 or whatever we dip to at that point and then past that there's probably support likely in the fours right and i don't even want to say i don't even want to say fours because i don't even want to think about fathom tesla going that low right but let's 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 just call it how it is you can say the support at the lows for march and there's, and there's probably support in the mid 450s, okay? Now, I don't know the last time, and I have to go back quite a, quite a bit away, that uh, a growth stock like Tesla that, you, that Wall Street knows, remember, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, these guys have price targets in the six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollar $9,000 price ranges, right? So it's not like this is just a bunch of uh, FOMO money coming in into a penny stock or a GME or AMC. Shout out to GMC and uh, GM. GME, yeah, GME, AMC. I thought about GMC for a second. So here's the good news of what I think. I think we've oversold this stock and at an RSI level, I don't know, I have to look at it. But just generally speaking, I would say the dip is probably, and this, we talk about odds a lot, we talk about odds a lot, probably at the lower end of the dipping that we're going to see. The bad news is if we continually dip and buyers don't step in meaning if there's no one looking to buy at these levels we got some we got some ways down to fall that's the bad news the good news is at these levels if you're a long-term hodler and that's why morgan stanley came out with a note uh, a couple weeks ago saying you know anything below 600 is a mega buy on tesla for us uh yeah i think it was morgan stanley like the good news here is in terms of a risk reward, you talk about risk reward for growth stocks and entry points and dollar cost averaging. This level, though, I know a lot of us are out of dry powder, right? In terms of how many times you want me to freaking buy the dip and lose money on, on betting on lotto calls. But if we talk about just general trends, I mean, it looks like it's caught a bottom. It looks like it's caught a bottom, right? Not only is there support here, but there's support with the 200 day moving average currently sitting at $590, right? 500, yeah, let's say 590. So a break and hold and close above 590 today would signal uh, a strong close in the next 40 minutes, 45 minutes to me would, would, would indicate, and with OPEX, this makes it a little bit complicated, would indicate that buyers are stepping in at these levels. Um, if we flush out for the for the rest of the day and we don't see buyers coming in, that's not to say that we don't go up next week. Remember, I, I just bought my leaps for 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 March 2023. But at the end of the day, I mean, the risk reward wise, undoubtedly you have a better risk reward on the upside now than maybe you did at this level point. Which, by the way, I definitely wasted money buying calls here too. Right, because remember, from here, if we were right here, we had some room to go down for our next support. From here, we are catching support, 
and we're kind of clinging to it like a magnet. So that's the way I kind of look at it at the moment. Um, strong affinity. Charles says for the previous low, then bouncing off the moving average. What's up, Waka? Um, Costa says, what's the PE ratio of Tesla? I'd have to look that up. I'd have to look that up on my Interactor Brokers. Um, yeah, Costa says, sell in May, walk away. Well, remember, I talked about this already on my other, uh, on my other video on my channel was, uh, that's such a, that's such a Wall Street thing to say to get retail investors out of the market. So it looks like we're kind of wedging into something, into a move up or down here in the next five minutes. So stay tuned. I think a move is about to happen one way or another. Um, Tesla PE dropped from 1100 to about 600 in the last quarter. Thank you, John Daly. Yes, and Tesla PE is gonna continually, continually drop as we go down. Uh, yes, and yeah, you will, you, you should pop up if you subscribe to Patreon on the chat. Uh, I do have my bots plugged in, so that should be working. I'm not sure if it's not, why, why it wouldn't be. Uh, far out the money, far out the money, uh, almost as far as you can possibly get. <clears throat> uh, 587 PE. Thank you, Johnny. Need volume increases PE. Okay. Uh, too many fills says, I think we saw this morning that their buyer is ready to step in. Problem is there's too much inflation fear to an extent, probably. Um, now you could have argued that though back here, uh, Inflation fears started, um, what, end of Feb, beginning of March, right? So back here. So this whole time we've been talking about inflation fears, right? And if you don't know, essentially with, it, with increased inflation, with increased inflation, that, decre that increases the discount rate for a lot of DCFs. If that increases DCF discount rates, that reduces the present value of equities today, especially on tech stocks that have most of their earnings yet to come in the future. If you're talking about a dividend stock or a value stock or a Warren Buffett boomer stock. Those ones are less affected because they're giving away dividends now. They're they're, you know, they're they're a value stock, right? Which, you know, there's a value stock trap that Kathy talks about a lot as well. Um has anyone calculated how quickly PE is going to drop? Yeah, uh, I think Rob Maurer from Tesla Daily did. And um, it's in his video, I think, Tesla Bull Case, where he talks to like a bunch of students. And it could easily, it's like Amazon's trajectory for PE, right? It was, it was extraordinary. Uh, it was extraordinarily high for a long time. And then uh, AWS margins came in, it was game over. Uh, which one's your 50 day? Yeah, sorry, I got I got to change the colors on my uh, I got to change the colors on my lines here. My 50 day is this one right over here, uh, 650 I believe. Yeah, uh, 667, 667. So which one that is? Uh, right there. That's my 50 day. Yeah, I got to change my colors. I don't even know why I have them all blue. Sorry. Uh, your Patreon link is broken. Getting an error page. Really? That's not good. Hold on one sec. Thanks for letting me know. Um, I will paste it in the chat. One sec. Patreon. It's weird. I just went on it today. Okay. There we go. I just pasted it for you. Appreciate it for you letting me know. I don't know why it's, uh, why it's broken. Okay. So yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely interesting right now in terms of what's going to happen. Daily chart looks hella oversold, uh, RS, RSI excluding, just oversold in the extent that we've literally fallen from 780 as a high in the middle of April to now a month later, hitting as low as 545 the other day. So this is where you calculate risk reward, figure it out. Uh, you saw a, a really funny, a really funny meme on our Discord. I'm gonna try to pull it up here. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Thomas. Uh, check this out. You guys are gonna laugh. My por my portfolio in February, my portfolio in March, my portfolio in May. <laughs> you got Yao Ming. If you're listening, you have no idea what I'm talking about. You got Yao Ming with my portfolio in February. You got Shaq, who's a little bit smaller than Yao Ming, surprisingly. My portfolio in March, and then you got Kevin Hart, my portfolio in May. I thought that was hilarious. That was great. Uh, 
very little things can uh, can make me smile looking at my portfolio PL, but you know, that was one of them. <laughs> that was hilarious. Um, five, we have five factories to be announced. So that'd be interesting. UK has two, one for cars, one for R&D. Um, Philip says, I sold two puts with the 645 strike. I'm glad getting assigned them today. What do you think? Uh, what was your cost basis? Like how much did you sell them for? What's your cost basis on the shares? Because at the moment you can buy shares at 585. So 645 minus 585. If you sold those for more than $6,000 each, you're you're in the green, right? Um, Russia, another groundbreaking, right? Right, Russia, that came out today. Rumors came out. Um, Elon says we're getting the button uh, this month 100%. Now, Chris, was that... Now, that's what he said three or four weeks ago, but I think last week... He actually said, and I can pull up my Chrome. Uh, he actually said that it, it will not, it, it'll be sometime in the next month, which puts us out of May, I think. Um, let me try to pull this up. Where was it? Um, right here. It's actually uh, one month out. I was going by this. The button timing in May is aspirational, depending on how it goes, I'd be surprised. Uh, FSD subscription is next month is a sure thing. So FSD subscription uh, next month is a sure thing was set on April 14th. The button timing in May is aspirational, so I wouldn't count on that. Um, if Elon's saying it's something's aspirational, it's almost probably not gonna happen at that, at that aspirational rate. It'll probably happen, like uh, Ron Barron says, but definitely not in the timing. Uh, the Cybertruck has grown on me a lot. I'm not sure what you guys feel about with the Cybertruck. It's grown on me. I, I, I gotta say, I gotta say, it's, um, at first I, I, I didn't, you know, it wasn't like an immediate like love or hate reaction. I was kind of like, hmm. But the more I see it, the more, you know, the more it makes sense. Elon is just, uh, just tweeting about uh, Bitcoin left, right, and center here. Uh, nothing new here in terms of that. Some memes, Doge. Tyler, don't talk about Doge. Elon time. Yeah, exactly. Um, hey, thanks for following me, Philip. Appreciate that. Um, Starship, great. What Tesla news was the last thing we got here? He tweeted something. Yeah, Bitcoin stuff. Uh, right, he tweeted at Ford. Here's the thing I do quite often as I go into, into his likes and see what he's been liking. As of late, nothing juicy, but sometimes you can get some, uh, you can get some little tidbits of what he's thinking about. SpaceX, Cybertruck, Starlink broadband service is now available in Belgium. That's cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tesla cars being delivered to famous people. Great. Um, Bill Maher, awesome. Warren Redlick's meme. Show me on the doll where Elon hurts you. I saw this. Uh, that's, that's funny. Um, I think Warren's a, he's a lawyer by trade, right? That makes it even more relevant. Um, this is quite, quite literally how we felt like for a while, right? And it's Squidward looking out of his home with SpongeBob and Patrick in the front yard dancing. And Squidward's labeled the rest of the crypto market and uh, SpongeBob and Patrick are Elon Musk and Dogecoin. Um, da, da, da. So yeah, so I, I usually look through his likes or Martin's likes to see what's happening. Okay, Elon just tweeted a minute ago. Tesla is the most Googled investment opportunity in 83 countries and world as a whole. Look at the back of that Cybertruck for a second. Look at that back end. Right? That's like when this hits the road, I've been saying this a lot. When this hits the road, this is gonna turn heads for, for the next two years until people get used to uh, used to this, in my opinion. Reset. So uh, Elon Musk just replied to that saying, wow. Saying, wow. So let's see. Let's see. Um, uh, in terms of flows, I don't think there's anything new here in terms of flows. Let's look at tech flows for a second. How are the queues looking? Uh, the queues, it looks like we just got a $782,000 call suite for 335 calls expiring next Friday. Wow, some about 9,207 contracts of 85 cent calls. Interesting. Okay, so quite aggressive on that. 
quite aggressive on that. Uh, in terms of Bitcoin, we're sitting at 36,000 on Bitcoin, 2,400 on Ethereum. A uh, Binance coin has took a, taken a huge, huge, huge tumble uh, with, with China and FUD coming out. Uh, sitting at $318 BNB is uh, Cardano ADA $1.50. And somehow Dogecoin is still sitting at 38 cents. 35 cents. 35 cents. What doesn't make any sense? Um, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. I don't know. Uh, Marcelo says FSD subscription perhaps today after hours? Huh, interesting. I mean, that's wishful thinking. Kevin, ah, yes, it's always a good day when we get a Yash Power. I appreciate you watching, Kevin. Thank you very much. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, join the family. Uh, if you're watching, if you're new here for the first time, you have no idea who this random dude talking about uh, stocks and crypto and Tesla is. My name is Yashu, and uh, you should probably get out of here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, FSC subscription, again, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I... <laughs> Look, I want FSD subscription as fast as you do, um, as fast as you do. But really, is it a possibility today? I mean, I think we would be hearing more murmurs and more rumors coming out of it. So, I mean, to be determined, to be determined, to be determined. So let's see. By the way, get your free BlockFi, I'm putting a plug, I'm going to say hashtag ad. Putting a, a plug in, you get up to $250 of crypto if you deposit $100 or more. This is the payout structure, by the way. I just I just looked this up uh, yesterday because someone was asking me. If you deposit $100, you get $15 in Bitcoin. And if, a, if Bitcoin's at 30 something thousand right now, if it goes back to 70 or whatever it was, you've just doubled your investment there. Uh, it's blockfi.com slash hit that bid or just check the description out. Okay, so far three people have signed up, so I appreciate you guys uh let's go back on to think or swim okay so tesla is sitting at and i do have cnbc pulled up in case we want to pull up the tv tesla sitting at 585 um 585 it's pretty much hugged today uh let's take a look here let's let's go up to the five minute graph on the day today uh as you can see today on tesla has been a very well other than the first half an hour maybe of trading we've just been between 590 and 583 that seven dollar pinned price movement is where we're sitting at um the volume weighted average price is coming down it's currently just a hair below 589 at the moment um so we'll see bitcoin is dumping uh you guys taught me slash btc is bitcoin futures on thinkorswim yeah bitcoin's going back down i i said yesterday on discord that the way the price action that was going for bitcoin when it was sitting at 41 42 40 000, it just didn't look strong enough at that moment at, at that point to break free uh whether or not we continue to sell off on bitcoin uh, to be determined again i mean i'm a long-term hodler of crypto so uh, you know i've i remember 2017 bought crypto from six or seven thousand all the way up to seventeen thousand kept buying and then for years it was just in the shitter right continue to hodl earlier this year i did sell some bought back in now with cardano and i had cardano from 2017 but god not nearly enough as i wish i had um bought cardano had a pretty big bump back in 2017 too i'm not sure if you guys know that it's been around for a long time um uh, but man do i love cardano like transferring it between wallets, paying people. It's just such a low transaction fee compared to Ethereum, which if you look at gas levels now, they're just nuts. They're nuts. <laughs> this period, Bahadir, welcome Bahadir. But shout out to Bahadir. He was, I'm not sure if you remember, Bahadir was our first ever Patreon subscriber uh, uh, in January when, when we launched everything. So shout out to you. This period reminds me before S&P inclusion. Perfect time to load up, says Bahadir. Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like the calm before the storm. Unfortunately, the storm has been quite literally a storm uh, with, our down, with our downward price movement for a while. The 200-day moving average is 5 a, 590, was it? Let me check again. 200-day is sitting at uh, 590. Let's just say 590. Yeah. So $7 price movement up would be good. I'll buy a Tesla when FSD can perform without a person in it. 
Well, at that point, you might as well just robo tax your round, right? So, uh, Gary Black. Okay, so we got to talk about Gary Black. Gary Black continues bearish on Bitcoin Tesla partnership. Do you think, Hope says, stock price would go up if Tesla sold, sold Bitcoin? Look, I, 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 we talked about this a little bit this morning uh, with our with our community, and I think the general consensus in our community is that Tesla is not going down because of Bitcoin. Now there is Tesla and Bitcoin connection in the mainstream media, but surely investors can't be this dumb. Tesla has 0.2% of its market cap tied into Bitcoin. Uh, it did that a while ago. Even if you wrote off that Bitcoin investment, which I think a lot of investors have done, that's why we saw a discounting of, of Tesla's stock price since then. Even if you wrote it off, you know, I don't think that explains the stock sell off. Uh, I think the stock sell off is for one thing, uh, if I had to if I had to round it out, I'd say other than macro, right? Because that's kind of a cop out answer. I'd say it's the chip shortage fears, right? The market thinking, okay, well, if we don't get enough chips, it doesn't matter how much demand there is. If there's no chips, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's that's my that's my thesis on why, uh, especially. And if you conflate those two ideas with the fact that uh, I think the Tesla fire, the, 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 not the Tesla, the the Texas storm happened with the chip shortages and the supply chain issues. That is what caused that first sell off. And then from there, from that point, remember investors, even if investors aren't selling, there's a lack of new investors wanting to come in, in midst of the fears of all the chip shortages. So like I said, I think a lot of those fears are overblown. I think second half of this year, we're gonna continue to be bullish on. Um, also, you gotta remember tax season was baked in here. A lot of people paid a lot of tax from last year. So there's a lot of things going on that you can't pinpoint on one thing. Uh, so to pinpoint it on Bitcoin itself doesn't make any sense, especially because when Bitcoin skyrocketed to 70K, 60 something K, it's not like Tesla was following that either, right? So you can't have it both ways. <laughs> um, Tyler says, if accounting practice requires a dip to record BTC investment as a loss, FUD will be big. Um, now, I'm not sure what settlement day is. I would guess the balance sheet would be settled on the last day of the quarter, which would mean this fall in Bitcoin, if it's temporary, we have time to recover from. And remember, Bitcoin is sitting at 36,000. Tesla bought Bitcoin at 32, I want to say, uh, is what I've read lately, between 32 and 35. There's no way for us to know for, for a fact because Coinbase did the... And remember, Tesla sold 10% at a profit. So that that brings uh, that brings the risk of them being down even lower, right? Steve says, Tesla to manufacture ships. Well, Tesla, I mean... You guys might know better than I. Tesla has Samsung that um, manufactures most of their chips. Um, so, you know. Uh, mm, yeah. Compound by chip shortage, not bringing in FOMO. Good call. Welcome, welcome, Steven, on Patreon join us on discord uh it's the inflation fears the 10-year dcf drastically changes if rates go up it's definitely part of that now but here's the thing if you don't believe in inflation right and we can talk about inflation right um but kathy wood in the long run the fed in the long run don't believe in inflation if that is the case and you don't believe in inflation in the long run you can consider this as a buying opportunity again if you can if you are scared of inflation Right. If you are in scared, if you are scared of inflation, pardon me, then this is just the start of what's going to be compounding your fears, in my opinion. So, we got the good juju. Don't worry about it. You know, it is what it is. Bring the good juju power. We're sitting at five eighty four twenty on the stock. There's nothing stopping us from a rally in the last twenty minutes if you bring the good juju here. Um, let's see. CNBS is talking about Foot Locker. Um, if you think I give two shits about Foot Locker, I don't. Uh, so I will pass on pulling up CNBS on that one. 
thoughts on Square. You guys know I love Square. Uh, I have loved Square. It's a dog of a stock in the last couple of months. I bag held a lot of leaps. Luckily, I, I'd sold a lot of the profit back when what Square hit all time highs of 270 or whatever it was, almost 300 or whatever. But I am not jumping back into Square for a little bit. I'm just going to wait it out. But I, I love Square. I love Square. Um, Sam says, which Cybertruck did you pre-order? I didn't, I didn't pre-order a Cybertruck. Um, it was between us waiting three years for a Cybertruck or getting a Model 3. So I, you know, we needed another car and uh, I wasn't going to wait three years for that. Uh, <laughs> Alex says, the market is scared, like Gary Black. <laughs> um, uh, IPOE, SoFi versus Square, says Arjun. A lot of people in our community, um, a few to name here, and Tyler, uh, Trung, you guys all love uh, IPOE SoFi. I don't, I haven't dug into IPOE and SoFi uh, big depth in, into, uh, I haven't gone down the rabbit hole, I should say. Uh, but merger dates happening, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, at the end of this month. Um, they, they've ditched all of their square four SoFi, so, or at least Anne, I think, has. Um mellow yellow i'd never ask you this uh i'd never ask you this but then it goes on to ask me as a realtor do you have any opinion on uh the matterport camera yeah the matterport camera is sick uh i don't have one but uh you know it's a good business model is buying that matterport camera and just going around to realtors uh, like myself before listings and doing all of their uh photos for them and, and their 3d tours i think it's a good i think it's a good uh i think it's a good uh business model Matterport's killed Matterport's just killed the industry. It's 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 amazing. Uh you guys are saying Nasdaq's getting weak. Let's check it out. Let's check out the queues. The queues are just consolidating at this point. Uh we have 20 minutes left on options expiration. Remember, anything can happen, like I said, on options expiration. Especially at the close, it looks like we are. And I'll pull up the one minute graph because I think it'll probably tell us a better story. Um, it, it, you know, in, in, in lieu of volume, in lieu of people buying, uh, market makers can potentially pin stocks. We're sitting at 23 million shares traded on Tesla at the moment. Um, Marcus says, yes, yeah, you can sell your Model 3 sometimes for more than the new price. Buy whatever Tesla you want new. Yeah. I don't know if that's the case though. I, uh, Marco, I like, I, I think in the last six months, I want to say the the price of a used Model Three has gone down. Um, all the, uh, also we get we get uh, rebates here and credits. So I mean, it's a good question. I could probably get a value on the Model Three, but even then, then I'd have to wait like two, probably two years before the Cybertruck even makes their way to Canada. Uh, but definitely an option for the future. Um, You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how big the Model 3 is in terms of storing stuff, uh, especially with the front and, and the back that has like a big box underground or underneath uh, the chassis of the car. Um, 23 million volume is nothing, says Marcelo. Yeah, I mean, average is what, 35? So we're a little bit low on volume on op, op, uh, option expiration day. Um. Yeah, so let's see, $583 uh, on Tesla at the moment. Let's see, look, look here. Um, yeah, so at the moment, uh, let me just pull up any sort of news that's come out here. Okay, we got a Gary Black tweet. Shall we read it? Tesla falling into the close as Bitcoin again falls apart. Many portfolio managers who bought Tesla as an EV play might just adjust to this reality until Tesla sells its Bitcoin stake. The pain trust sorry, I can't even say it. The pain threshold for Zach is likely at 34,700 Bitcoin close. Because before that, below that, Tesla starts taking impairment charges. Listen. I'm going to refer everyone to this tweet 
by Elon Musk. Where is it? Where is it? Let me find it. You guys already know which one I'm talking about. Um, is it in this thread? No, this is Dave's thread. Let's see here. I'm looking for the diamond hands. I'm looking for the diamond hands tweet. I'm looking for the diamond hands tweet. Oh, fuck. Whatever. Elon Musk has a tweet. I gotta find it later. Um, so, okay, look at Squawk Square now. This is just getting stupid. Wake up, Elon. You seriously want to put Tesla stock and shareholders at risk over a joke meme and digital currency like Bitcoin? Dude, this is so this is so typical. The stock is getting killed by this decision. Tesla, and, um, it, you know, there's a thing, and I don't think a lot of um, people understand uh, the, the, the dichotomy between correlation and causation, right? You could say Tesla is falling today because it is cloudy where you live and it is raining in the town next to you. That doesn't mean because it's raining in your town that Tesla stock is going down. It might just be happenstance, a correlation that, te that Tesla is going down because of Bitcoin and not because of Bitcoin. It, it's just, I don't know, okay? You guys can disagree with me. Let me know in the, in the comments what you guys think. But this is not, I, and correct me if I'm wrong if you think so, this is not because of Bitcoin. This is OPEX. This is based on potential market makers moving the stock on options expiration in lack of volume territory. And Bitcoin at the moment, let me pull up Bitcoin actually here. Let's pull up Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is currently sitting at $35,870. Diamond hands. That's exactly what he tweeted. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> it's just nuts. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um... Charles says, you can lay Square, SPY, Apple, Tesla charts directly on top of each other. How much crypto do these own? Yeah, they're all correlated at the moment. They're all, it's just direct market selling. So check this out. Let, let's actually do that. Thanks, uh, Charles. So ch this is Tesla's one minute graph. Let's pull up the text, pull up queues. This is the queues. Like, are you telling me that this sell off is because of the queue or is queues or market correction or is it Bitcoin? Square does own Bitcoin, so Square's a little bit different. Uh, it is going down. Apple is just a dog of a stock right now. It's just an absolute dog of a stock. Um, it's like, I don't know, Gary, I didn't know that Apple also had Bitcoin. Um, not sure. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't even say it's, oh, the FUD doesn't stop. He who shall not be named is on. Hmm, interesting. Um, Alex says, we're, we're dumping like me the day after I have Budgie's Burritos. Alex, is that a Vancouver reference that I just heard? Or is that uh, Budgie's Burrito? Is that a franchise somewhere? Because that's a, that's a good reference right there. Glad it's Friday, says Waka. Tesla has been trash all week in the past three months. Going four months is bleeding out material. That's a Vancouver. <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, so low of day right now on Tesla. Rewind this video back 15 minutes or whatever, half an hour or whatever I went back. And I said, we're forming this pattern that either we're going to break up or we're going to break down. And it looked like, it looks like we have successfully broken down 581 on the stock. Here is, um, here's the thing, right? Yes, we've broken down, but it's not like we're very far from 600. A $20 price movement would represent uh twenty dollars divided by five eighty. It represent a three point five percent up day, uh, and we're over six hundred. So we're not that far away from it, but it is definitely exhausting. But here's the thing: I had to follow. Trent says I had to unfollow Gary. I was getting old, just listening to rehash the same old thing. It says Twitter, yeah, for sure. I feel ya. Solving the money problem video says about Elon's recent Dogecoin buy, it shows that he bought at 57 cents, okay? Okay, I'd have to watch that video to be honest. Um, at least yesterday's close was green, yeah, absolutely. So we're 1% down for the day, sitting at $581 on the stock price. Um, so 
We shall see, we shall see. Remember, it is options expiration and share volume is really low. We're at 24 million on Tesla share volume today. Um, you know what? You know what we haven't checked in a while? Let's check uh, Tesla short interest. It's been a while since we've checked as Bitcoin continues to settle around 35,000. Let's do um, let's do NASDAQ uh, Tesla and let's pull up short interest on the stock. Let's take a look. Short interest. So the last update we got was April 30th. Uh, we had 41.4 rounding up million shares short, uh, which at an average volume uh, of 28 million shares per day, that's a 1.5 days roughly to cover on the short volume. Remember, not all short interest is something that you want to look at as a short squeeze, right? A lot of, and I have a video, an old video on this. I'm not sure if you guys even remember this video, but it's about looking at short interest and the fact that, um, if you own uh, a lot of long Tesla uh, positions, uh, specifically speaking with regards to, let me just pull this up. I think I have it on my Interactive Brokers. Let's see here. So Tesla. Specifically speaking on warrants on Tesla, then you might short uh, outstanding shares to offset the Delta on those warrants. So a whole nother video on that. In terms of flows, let's see if anything new has popped up in the time being. Um, yeah, um, absolutely. Alex says, I do feel like Gary Black adds value. I do disagree with his Bitcoin stance, however. Yeah, absolutely. And I think here's the thing. I, I don't I don't put myself in a vacuum uh, or an echo chamber worth of, you know, only people that I agree with I follow or inter or interact with because... That's not how you live a rational, sane, healthy 360 view on life. Uh, but, you know, you have to be able to disagree with people because that if you just agreed with everyone, you'd just be faking it, right? Um, the 200 day moving average is around 589. Yeah. So, I mean, 589 is a, is a stone throws away at the moment. But that being said, it's not like we're, we're going to get there uh, at the speed we are right now. We have 10 minutes for power hour here. So we're going to have to see. Um, so. <laughs> uh, I think it was said on Tesla Daily or something that Bitcoin drops lower than what they had to pay for it. They would need to take a hit on the balance sheet for the quarter, even if Bitcoin was not sold. Yes, but that being said, I think settlement day would be um, April, May, June, June 31st or June 30th, right? It, it would be the last business day in June, would it not? Like, you know, intermittently what happens, I don't think it really matters. Harris says, welcome to Tesla stock. You might trade sideways for five years. After five years, be down 25%. Then maybe six years, be up 2,000%. There's a degree of truth to that. But now with Tesla being a beta name, now with Tesla being a part of these index funds, these S&P funds, these mutual funds, these big money managers holding it, and now Tesla, that fact that it has broken out, I think it's okay to disagree with that stance only because a healthy growth stock shows year per year, year over year gains. Um, Tesla back when, when, you know, what you're talking about is when Tesla was $200, $175 pre-split, it was... You know what I call not at critical mass yet. It wasn't a going concern. Um, I mean, it was for its shareholders, but at the end of the day, it was a twenty billion dollar market cap company, a fifty billion dollar market cap company. At this point now, Tesla uh, has it in its best interest to grow the stock price year over year to give gains to their investors, and especially now with uh, Giga Austin coming out, Giga Berlin coming out, Shanghai coming at full capacity. All of them ramping up for next year. Cybertruck coming out, 46 80, uh, 80 battery cells, uh, solar uh, expanding, um, so much stuff happening. FSD, FSD subscription. Um, these things, right? These things should contribute to the stock price movement, uh, especially going up. But I do agree. With, I, I do agree with the fact that these things are not rational, right? Uh, uh, Stock price is not rational. You know, everyone says it's a perfect market. It's at, it's at equilibrium. Technically speaking, there's an argument for perfect market theory. But if you want an exception to that, just look at freaking GME, right? 
Like you're going to try to tell me that GME deserved to go up to $400 or whatever, right? Perfect market theory is not perfect. Uh, in absence of everything else, you can assume it is. Uh, but the argument here you can make is that if Tesla stock price is falling more than you think it should, uh, you know, um, with respect to its fundamentals, you could say if you're a long-term shareholder, these are not, this is not something I worry about. This is in fact an opportunity for me, right? Uh, NASDAQ looking to turn green. Steve says, Juju master high speaker. Uh, okay, let's 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 power hour up here. Where's the where's the oranges? Let's get another one peeled up. Um, Doug says, do I think they'll do another share offering? No, I do not think so. I'd be very surprised if in the next year we 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 get another share offering. If they wanted to do a share offering, or if they thought about it, they would not have put money into Bitcoin. That's my thought. And if you look at the ten percent of Bitcoin holdings that they did sell, that was in essence. That was in essence their own share offering, right? That was their own capital raise, if you think about it. Philip, I just purchased 10 shares of my Roth. Nice, very cool. DJ's got the orange emojis. Let's do it. Thanks, Tyler. Colton says, are my 610 calls for next week's, for, for next week's uh, screwed? I'll, I won't say that word. Mm, let's take a look. What is market pricing telling us? For next week's option chain, a 610 will cost you, let's do 14 strikes. Uh, actually, no, I'm gonna have to come more out. Let's do 50. A 610 is gonna cost you 575, which is, the delta on this is 25. A 25 delta on the put side is 725 so we are put bias we are downside bias for next week in terms of pricing of the market so keep that in mind um you know the what this signals is probably that we continue to be flat uh, or consolidate mm -hmm. or have downside pressure for next week but the tesla of old i'm talking tesla pre-february would not have agreed with that take at all uh, the Tesla February and before did not give a shit about what the market makers were pricing in. And that was because so many big money managers had to buy in. Uh, looking at that option chain right now, it looks a little bit dead on the call side. Now that could be a good entry point, but man, I don't know how many times in the last two months I've tried buying in at really good entry points and cheap entry points on the call side, only to learn that they were cheap for a reason on Tesla. And remember, every option chain is different, right? The way I look at Tesla, it might be different than the way I look at other stocks. You get a feel for the options chain the more you look at the options chain for your particular equity. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What is IV rank? Let's do it. IV rank right now is six, six. I think the other day when I was looking at this, it was 11. The day before that, it was 14. So implied volatility throughout this week has fallen um, despite uh, everything that's been happening. So yeah. I don't really have an opinion on the wheel strategy. I don't really look into it. Uh, I don't really, uh, yeah, I don't really do it too much. So. Uh, I don't want to steer you the wrong way. Um, okay, so 580 on Tesla. It looks like we're probably going to close in and around there. I mean, we do have support on the pivots at 580, also psychologically. <laughs> um, do I want to go long? Do I want to go long? I mean, I could trade some shares. Uh, if you guys really think... If you guys really think after hours, I, feel, I, feel like I got a couple of comments here saying after hours FSD subscription is coming out. Probably day trade a couple of shares here and there, but I don't, I don't think so. But who knows? The Nasdaq is sitting 63 basis points on the downside. S and P is flat, nine basis points. Uh, Bitcoin, four minutes. Yeah, I mean I could probably sell off after hours. That's why I would do shares. You just got, got, Josh says you just got calls for the 14th. Uh, wish you well. I wish you well. Remember, I, 
if you look at the daily and everyone has their own perception if you look at the daily right yeah i don't like i don't like today's candle but it 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 it's hard to argue against us finding a bottom here i mean there is the argument that okay if it collapses down past here you know we can't we're kind of in free fall at, at that point for sure there's that argument to be had um but if you look at if you just look at it through um <laughs> i guess if you look at it through your green goggles this does look like it's curling off the bottom uh although i don't like today's candle but i don't know how much of that candle can be discounted for the fact that today's is options expiration day so market makers might have to balance their books you know susquehanna citadel these guys are sitting on shares these guys are sitting on call options put options that they need to uh, that they need to liquidate or exercise after hours so there's a lot of stuff here right remember historically speaking tesla rips on monday and it dips on friday right historically not been the case lately but historically tesla it gets killed on friday rockets on monday right Mo monday moon day as you guys call it so <laughs> there we go finished at 580 pretty much on the dot our closing cross for the day i'm not sure if you guys can see this is 580.88 uh, right at one o'clock pacific time coming in um there we go so yeah, I mean, uh, Raptor says, I feel like Tesla dumped all their good news stories uh, quickly years ago. The semi, the roads were revealed all way too quickly. Um, should have saved the good news for times like this. I mean, I don't think they look at, I don't think they look at how to manipulate the stock price. That's very much a boomer technique to corporation management, to public corporation management. You could argue that they should, but I think they just kind of release stuff as it kind of comes up, right? To the moon yeah close uh, close the closing bell for the day so 580 88 let's watch after hours for a little bit to see what happens here um boil down says in tesla lounge i predicted 590 ten dollars off there the problem is ten dollars is quite meaningful it seems like nowadays if we look at the stock price in the last week essentially these are the last five trading days right here right just pretty much hugging between under just under 600 all the way down to 550 staying within that price range this really feels like consolidation mode at the moment really feels like consolidation mode the question is do we rock it from here up or do we break down um arguments for and against can be made if I'm placing my bets, I am going to place my bets on us rocketing on the upside, not just because I believe macro is finally sorted out because of tax, uh, because of, of all of the growing concerns finally just being old news and us moving into the second half of the year in a couple of weeks. Arguments against might be inflation is still a risk. Uh, tech stocks are still overvalued, you could say. You could say boomer stuff is better reopening plays coming up remember everything's reopening now right uh bill de blasio new york just opened up uh one of the most democratic states in the u.s just opened up fully um the other couple of days ago i saw on our canadian news network here so that's good news reopening plays are going to mean that some money is going to be shuffled around in places that are beaten up like commercial real estate or uh you know entertainment and service industry stuff so but I, you know, I still think everyone's going to get bored of that eventually and come back to tech because they know tech is where the growth is. Right now, everyone's in self-preservation mode. You might go to boomer stuff for a little bit, but give it some time. People are going to realize, okay, I'm tired of just being in boomer stuff. I don't want to maintain my capital, which I thought I kind of wanted during the pandemic. I need to grow this thing now. Steve says next week, rocket and roll. Absolutely. I think so. Uh, what do I think of ADA Cardona, uh, uh, Cardano? I, see, I keep on saying Cardona because I think of Grant Cardone for some reason every time I say that. Just I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, I'm super bullish on uh, super bullish on ADA. Um, did I hear me? Kevin is running for California governor. Yes, I did. I did. I did. Super cool. Uh, what a good pivot on his career. He's going to kill it no matter what he does. Even if he doesn't win, he's winning in life, right? Um, fun fact, I'm not sure if you guys know, Meet Kevin actually got started. His YouTube channel 
really first blew up. I remember subscribing to his channel when it was at 50K or something because of his Grant Cardone videos. Um, he used to show Grant Cardone a lot, uh, fight against him. Same with Tom Nash, actually. Um, shout out to Tom Nash. Uh, his channel, he'd probably tell you like Dan Bilzerian, Grant Cardone, making videos, uh, rebuking a lot of these guys is how his channel grew a lot. Um, yeah, I don't associate Grant with ADA. Yeah, so, so I mean, boring week in the grand scheme of things. You could have day traded in and out. Uh, selling premium is still pretty cheap. So, you know, a couple of weeks ago in our Discord, I made a few uh, selling put spread plays. And, and join us in our Discord if you want to get uh, to know if, you know, we do trades or anything like that. We kind of publish them, although it's not really formal. It's kind of as they come. But I think... I think if premium can jump up next week a little bit, right, and we can start selling some premium on the call side and the put side, uh, on, on the put side, it would be more of an interesting market because then now we can pivot, uh, we can convert those into long positions or short positions. Um, so, yeah, me Kevin announced he's moving to Florida. What? That's a lie, right? He just literally started running for 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 governor. Don't forget Juju Master. <laughs> Thanks, Steve um what yeah I don't, I don't think that's true he made a video about it i guess he's not running for governor huh i don't know weird um <laughs> marcelo hit the like button guys for god's sake i appreciate that i appreciate that hit the like please hit the like and subscribe by the way our goal again above my fat head is we want to hit ten thousand subscribers on this channel um before uh out before the end of or before july i should say is kind of the goal uh much appreciate if you're watching you and you have no idea who i am uh we talk a lot about stocks like tesla growth stocks arc invest um the general market as a whole crypto now a lot more and, and tying everything together with options right how do we trade options how do we profit from options how do we make a couple extra bucks that's the goal of this channel none of this is financial advice um Stocks we don't talk about usually, um, Ford, um, I don't know, even, even <laughs> steel, US steel commodities. If you like that sort of stuff, probably not the channel to follow, but, uh, but you know, still welcome. Um, <laughs> can anyone send a link for, for FSD subscription rumors? So there is, let me pull this up for you guys. Let me show y'all. Let me show y'all. Let me pull up the Google Doc. Thoughts on AMD. I mean, AMD, uh, NVIDIA, all these guys, all these chip factor manufacturers, you know, it's hard not to be bullish on them. The problem is, do they have enough supply at the moment? Oh, frick, I opened up uh, Photoshop. So let's see here. Like I said this morning, I, I, I think, I think, um, I think uh, NVIDIA is probably a trillion dollar company in the next five to seven years. So let me just pull this up. Our future catalysts. I'm trying to find that uh, video. I don't know how many views I had on it. Let me just take a look here. Man, I do a lot of power hours. I like it. Uh, FSD catalyst. FSD catalyst. Let's see here. Okay. Welcome to In this mind. video, I have a Google Doc. So check this out. In this Google Doc is the shared um collaborative uh list of f of tesla upcoming events right and fsd launch as a subscription is based in here with links so check out that video for that uh, it's called upcoming massive tesla stock catalyst it's in the description for that um and it's two days late as of right now and it's an electric source uh, if you want to look at the source on it um so there's that. Uh, electric is kind of hit or miss, to be honest. Tim Cook is also testifying in Epic Games antitrust trial. Yes, he is. Uh, no comment on that. No comment on that. Uh, by the way, join us on Patreon if you get if you want access to Discord. Let me just plug it right here quickly. Let's see my fat face in here. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash hit that bid is where it is. We have like a couple hundred members now it's growing community uh we talk about stocks on there uh, all day the forty thousand truck is coming that's the thing right chris is if the if if 
if at the end of the day, if at the end of the day, the cyber truck is a $40,000 pickup, why would you buy a Ford F-150? That's the question, right? <laughs> That's the question. I don't know. Would you? I, I, that's my question. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Is would you really want to buy a Ford F one fifty if you can buy uh, a, a cyber truck? Philip says thanks, Yashu, for what you do. Keep it up, bro. I appreciate that, Philip. Much love. For uh, it's for people like you that uh, that subscribe and join and and stuff and support me that I'm able to do this. I'm hoping. Here's what my thought is to take this channel as well. And let me know what feedback you guys have on the channel in terms of what I want to, what type of videos and stuff to grow into. My, but my thought is kind of on this channel, if I can start doing a little bit more interviews, uh, a little bit more live streaming. I had someone tell me yesterday that they'd appreciate if I did more live streams during the day. And to be honest, I can. I'm lucky enough where right now my schedule is free where I could do you know, a couple live streams, maybe market open. I'm already doing kind of market close more and more like news-based live streams. I'm happy to do that because I think right now with my schedule, I'm able to do that. So if I'm able to grow, my dad would grow. I would never buy that. If I'm able to grow the channel, I, I think it makes sense. Uh, so by the way, uh, this is Canadian dollars. I should probably change this for you guys to US. You can join Patreon, which gets you access to exclusive content uh, on our Discord. Um, at a $5 level, there's, there's 12 spots remaining on that. Uh, our investor level, which is 15 bucks, and then there's the whale, and then there's a couple extra levels if you wanna join. Essentially, this gets you Discord access, which is glorified adult MSN Messenger. The good thing, the really cool thing I like personally about Discord is the fact that we have different channels for different stocks. So we have obviously our Tesla channel where news stuff comes in, people making their trades, all that sort of stuff. Apple, Amazon, the general market channel, uh, for just kind of how futures are doing stuff like that our crypto channel which is popping at the moment um with kind of what's happening a lot of good experts in here as well and then tweets which by the way i don't i don't really have to go on twitter too much because you know shout out to uh, people like Anne on our discord that just post all of the relevant tweets about anything that we're kind of interested in in here is kind of filters it out for me um so check that out uh, people in Texas will stick with a traditional look. Maybe, but you know what? Even people in Texas are going to, at the end of the day, uh, in my opinion, gonna, gonna switch on that. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, money talks, right? And if it's a better product, the Cybertruck, uh, yeah. I mean, especially if, if you're a general contractor, you don't have to pay for gas anymore. I think it's a big deal. The Ford F-150, you see, can run lots of stuff in the ad. Then you can't go home as it would use up all of its max 300 miles. I mean, the biggest problem with the Ford F-150 Lightning is not the fact, in my opinion, that um, it's a Ford. I think the problem is Ford is going to have to sell it at a loss. Whenever you're selling something at a loss, it's not viable and it's just kind of show, showboating. You're, that you're, you know, you're selling EVs, all this sort of stuff. So... I, you know, watch um, a great channel is Now You Know on YouTube. Um, watch their video on um, how legacy autos will never switch to fully turning electric because they're going to be biting the hand that feeds them. And because they can't make these EVs at a net profit large enough to really recoup a lot of their fixed costs, it's never going to be a big, uh, it's never going to be a big part of of their strategy. Uh, Tesla owner, why would any, why would FSD subscription monthly mean anything without the FSD beta download first? Because remember FSD, the way it is right now, auto uh, um, uh, navigate on autopilot on highways, which can actually take exits and mergers and lane changes and overtaking on the highways, summon, smart summon, auto park, uh, all these things already exist at the moment with fsd maybe there is an argument to be made that they're delaying it up until there is more advancement on the fsd stuff there could be an argument on that but like i've said in my other videos about fsd and the pricing model is that they could sell what they have right now for a certain amount of price and people would buy it because people are buying uh ten thousand dollars uh worth of a package at the moment martin hey ashley how's the mental capital preservation going 
I I, <laughs> I wish it was going better. I wish it was going better. This market is driving me nuts. Um. Yeah, it's yeah. This market is driving me nuts. Absolutely, it's uh, it's tough. It's tough. So, I mean, at the end of the day, also, um, Bank of America, by the way, did lower their um, did lower their price target on Tesla uh, from 900 to 700. So keep an eye out on that. Um, I don't know how much I don't know how much that makes a difference in potentially. I, I don't know. I think it's quite I'd have to read the note. I haven't read the note, admittedly. But to go down 200 bucks when you just went up 200 bucks when the stock market was was extremely, extremely pumping, it just seems like you don't know what you're doing. So yeah, dead air. Yeah, absolutely. Right by the, fi the Friday after hours. Uh, okay, let me buy a couple of shares. Hold on. Let's buy two shares, whatever. Let's see. Let's hold on Monday, see what happens. All right. Buy two after hours. Let's buy it at 580.64. Let's see if I get filled. Okay, order is submitted. All right, let's do it, whatever. I mean, no big deal. Okay, so really good stream, guys. Had an awesome time this week, despite what's happening with everything. Um, let's hope for next week. Let's hope for next week we start skyrocketing back up. Remember, we're just kissing and flirting with this 200-day move. Sounds too erotic. We're just flirting with this 200 day moving average at the moment. Um, let's hope that uh, we break free on the upside on this particular <laughs> on this particular uh, 200 day moving average and we continue to go up uh, past there. Yeah, she's a market maker, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if 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 the theory goes that market makers don't. Yeah, I got filled. If the market makers, if the theory is the market makers don't make any money, right? Then that's definitely accurate. I'm just kidding. Um, I wish. Okay. Much love to everyone. Uh, get your two free stocks with my Weeble link in the description. If you don't have Weeble already, shout out to everyone that's been signing up on that. Get your BlockFi account, deposit over a hundred bucks and you get uh, Bitcoin back. Uh, and with Bitcoin being so goddamn low, maybe that makes you money just by sitting in there. And uh, join us on our Discord channel with our Patreon access uh, in the description above. Much love to everyone. Take care. And as we say every Friday on this channel, step away from the computer for this weekend. Markets are not changing. Your portfolio balance is not going to change on the Saturday or the Sunday. Uh, spend some time with family. Digest everything that's happened in the last, uh, last week, which <laughs> I know is a lot. And uh, recoup for next week and hopefully next week on Monday, right when uh, market opens, we're up 15%. I'm going to go live. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> All right, guys. Much love. Uh, much love to everyone and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.